Jesus had a love of small things and tiny people that others tended to overlook or ignore. For example, he held up children, children, as being representative of how we should approach the kingdom of God. And in Matthew's gospel, more than once, he holds up a tiny mustard seed as an emblem of faith. Now, if you want to see just exactly how small a mustard seed is, just scroll down a couple of posts on the church's Facebook page. You see it? It's that tiny. It's that small. And Jesus says in today's parable that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, the smallest of all the seeds, which can grow into the largest of shrubs and then into a tree. Later in Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, that would be enough. It would be enough to move mountains. And he's saying that something small, something overlooked, can do amazing things in and through God. But here's the question. Is that how your faith feels right now? My guess is you'd probably answer no. This has been the summer of our discontent. And maybe your faith doesn't feel like a mustard seed. Maybe it feels more like a molecule of a mustard seed. You haven't lost your faith, but it's just that life has been just that hard right now. It's exhausting to get through the day. And there's so many, many stressors that we all share in common, especially as COVID-19 numbers continue to climb. And what should be uniting us is dividing us. How can a mustard seed faith move a mountain when it can't even get people to wear a mask? And a reminder, we wear a mask not for ourselves, but out of love of neighbor. How can mustard seed faith move a mountain when we find it difficult to address real concerns over schools in this pandemic world? How can mustard seed faith move a mountain when there are still those who think that talk about racism is making a mountain out of a molehill? But beloved, as always, as always, this is when Jesus comes in. Not to chide us, not to chide us that we can't move mountains right now, but to wrap his arms of love around us. And St. Paul reminds us of that. St. Paul, who a lot of times I imagine as a grouchy old saint, it's St. Paul who speaks most eloquently of love. And as we've just heard in his letter to the church in Rome, it is at, time, at such a time as this that the Spirit comes to us in our weakness. The Spirit comes to us in our weakness. God's not just there when we are at our best, at our strongest, but God is there when we're at the lowest points of our life, when our faith seems to be just a shadow of itself, that's when love comes. Bidden or not bidden, God is present. Bidden or not bidden, God is present. Those words hung over the entrance to the office of Carl Jung, the great psychologist. They were written in Latin, so not everybody who came to Jung with all the problems of their lives would have understood those words, but that did not change the truth of those words. Bidden or unbidden, God is present. Hang those words over the entrance to your wounded heart, my beloved. Plant those words beside the minuscule mustard seed of faith. See what takes root. One of my go-to authors is Philip Yancey. Now, I like him because he does not shy away from the harder questions of life. But even Yancey 
can become overwhelmed by those questions. And he tells a story on himself when he was stuck in a layover in an airport concourse. And with time to spare, he struck up a conversation with the person who was sitting next to him. And they began sharing their life stories. And you can do that when you have a five-hour layover at O'Hara. And at that time, Yancey was writing his book, Disappointment with God. And he shared that it was a season where he felt burdened by other people's pains and sorrows, by their doubts and by their unanswered prayers. And then Yancey writes, my companion listened to me for a very long time. And then out of nowhere, she asked a question that has always stayed with me. Philip, do you ever just let God love you? It's pretty important, I think. Beloved, do you ever just let God love you? It's pretty important, I think. This is the love of Christ that Paul shares with us when he says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, I am convinced, that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, wow. Another one of my go-to authors is Frederick Beekner, whose words of wisdom frequently come out of the wounds of his own life. And yet in these wounds, he still revels, absolutely revels, in the love of Christ. He doesn't hide those wounds, but he holds them up to God, kind of like a child with a cut finger who goes up to their mother and says, it hurts, it hurts. Make it better, make it better. Beekner writes, we are loved above all things. That is the good news of the gospel and loved just the way we turn up on Sunday in our best clothes and on our best behavior and with our best foot forward. Remember those days? But we are loved as we alone know ourselves to be the weakest and shabbiest of what we are, along with the strongest and with the gladness. All of that is lifted up to God, and God loves all of it. And elsewhere, Beekner writes that people are prepared for everything except for the fact that beyond the darkness of their blindness, there is a great light. It's the light that reveals the treasure in the field. It's the light that illumines the pearl of great price. It's the light that turns the molecules of a mustard seed into something that can be planted, take root, and grow tall enough that it can provide shade for weary travelers. That's the grace of love that is given to each of us. And no matter how we are feeling, no matter how we are feeling, because our feelings are not the best barometers to determine the love of God, that love exists. And the Spirit comes to us in our weakness. And for me, that is the good news in the summer of our discontent. So my people, be like the child who holds up the cut finger and says, make it better. Hold up your wounds and all the ways you feel weak and all the ways that you feel less than enough and say to God, make it better, make it better. Then watch and see what happens because bidden or not bidden, God in his love is present. Amen.